Hi there, and welcome to Noctis on YouTube. A daring underwater journey began to explore the mysteries hidden in the northwestern Atlantic. The mission was aimed at uncovering the secrets of the long-submerged Titanic wreckage. Ocean Gate's Titan Submersible, an undersea vehicle designed to withstand intense hydrostatic pressures of up to 3,800 meters beneath the surface, was at the helm of the mission. However, the ambitious journey ended in disaster when Titan violently imploded under the immense pressure of the deep sea. Before discussing the disaster, it is important to understand the distinction between a submersible like the Titan and a submarine, as well as the history of Ocean Gate expeditions. Ocean Gate Expeditions is a privately held company that specializes in deep sea exploration. The company was founded in 2009 by Stockton Rush, a former naval officer and entrepreneur. OceanGate's primary focus is on providing submersible access to the world's most famous shipwrecks, including the Titanic. The company's flagship submersible is the Titan, which is a five-person submersible that can reach depths of up to 4,000 meters or 13,120 feet. The Titan is equipped with a number of state-of-the-art features, including a high-definition camera system, a manipulator arm, and a life support system that can sustain the crew for up to 24 hours. OceanGate has conducted a number of successful expeditions to the Titanic, including a 2021 expedition that marked the 110th anniversary of the ship's sinking. The company has also conducted expeditions to other shipwrecks, including the Lusitania and the Andrea Doria. A submarine is a larger vessel that can travel both on the surface of the water and underwater. Submarines are typically used for military purposes, but they can also be used for commercial purposes, such as research and tourism. A submersible is a smaller vessel that is designed to travel underwater only. Submersibles are typically used for research and exploration purposes. Ocean Gate Expeditions uses submersibles to explore shipwrecks and other underwater sites. The company's submersibles are equipped with state-of-the-art technology that allows them to collect data and images of underwater sites. This data and imagery is used to create educational and historical resources. The main difference between a submarine and a submersible is that a submarine is self-sufficient, while a submersible is not. Submarines can operate independently underwater, while submersibles need to be launched from and recovered by a larger vessel. Submarines are typically larger than submersibles, and they are equipped with a variety of features that allow them to operate independently underwater. These features include a hull that can withstand the pressure of the deep ocean, a propulsion system that allows it to move underwater, a ballast system that allows it to control its depth, a life support system that provides oxygen and removes carbon dioxide, a navigation system that allows it to find its way underwater, a communication system that allows it to communicate with the surface. Submersibles are like the compact younger siblings to submarines. They're typically smaller and not decked out with all the bells and whistles that allow submarines to venture and function autonomously in the watery depths. While submersibles do come with systems to control their buoyancy, they aren't equipped with their own means of propulsion. They rely on a bigger vessel for getting around and sustaining life, being both launched from and retrieved by it. Submarines and submersibles have some distinct differences aside from those already mentioned. Size, for instance. Submarines are generally much larger and capable of plunging into much deeper waters. They come with a wide array of weaponry and sensors, something that submersibles typically lack. Choosing between a submarine and a submersible boils down to the mission's specifics. 
If there's a need for a vehicle to independently navigate underwater for long stretches of time, then a submarine would be your go-to. But if the task only requires a short underwater operation, going for a submersible might be a more budget-friendly decision. At first sight, the Titan submersible impresses with its ingenious and innovative design. Crafted from a combination of carbon fiber and titanium, it's a compact vessel at 6.7 meters long, weighing in at a hefty 9,525 kilograms. Interestingly, the manufacturers ingeniously used expired Boeing carbon fiber, repurposing the airplane-grade material to construct the Titan, keeping costs low while maintaining strength and durability. The Titan proves its metal by being able to dive as deep as 4,000 meters, carrying a payload weight of 685 kilograms. It's engineered to withstand tremendous pressure, equal to 366 times the Earth's atmosphere at sea level when it reaches its maximum depth. Despite its small footprint, the Titan packs a punch with its ability to house five people, a pilot and four passengers. Its cylindrical, tube-like design optimizes space, enabling it to carry more passengers than a conventional submersible of a similar size. Inside, it's a snug fit with no room to stand, Yet the design ensures there is sufficient space for passengers to conduct essential tasks such as data collection and submersible inspection. Despite the cutting-edge lighting system, it can get quite frigid inside the Titan. As former OceanGate mission specialist Colin Taylor stated, the lack of sunlight at ocean depths results in freezing temperatures. The cold, coupled with the materials of the submersible, can make the interior rather icy. Navigating the Titan is done intriguingly using a repurposed Logitech GF710 wireless gamepad, a choice driven by its cost-effectiveness and user-friendly nature. The gamepad features a joystick for direction control, buttons to operate the lights and cameras, and a throttle for speed management. The Titan owes its agility to four Interspace 1200 electric propulsors, which allow movement in any direction at a top speed of three knots. The Chosen Gamepad, an older wireless model using 2.4 gigahertz signals, communicates with a PC or, in this unique case, the submersible, facilitating the Titan's maneuvering. Inside a submarine, there's a ballast tank situated between the inner and outer hulls. This ballast tank helps determine the submarine's position while it's at the desired depth. When the submarine dives, air is released from the ballast tank through the vent and is replaced with water. The aim here is to make the submarine's water density greater so that its weight force is larger than the upward force by water. The air that's been expelled from the ballast tank is stored in pressurized air cylinders as a life-sustaining reserve. Meanwhile, when the submarine rises to the surface, the pressurized air carried by the submarine is pumped into the ballast tank, forcing the water out. This action reduces the submarine's water density, making its upward force larger than the weight of the submarine. If the ballast tank is only partially filled with water, the weight of the submarine equals the buoyant force of the sea. This state will make the submarine neither sink nor rise, hover. Submarines are designed not only to float, hover, and sink, but their shape is also made to withstand the strong currents at ocean depths, enabling them to navigate underwater. The expedition was part of an eight-day voyage by OceanGate Titanic Expeditions, Passengers were estimated to have to pay up to $250,000 to participate in this underwater tour. The ship was crushed with five passengers on board. They were Stockton Rush, pilot and CEO of OceanGate Expeditions, Hamish Harding, British businessman and adventurer, Shahzada Dawood, British businessman of Pakistani descent, and his son Suleiman Dawood, 
and Paul Henry Nargelet, French diver. Setting sail from St. John's on the farthest eastern side of Newfoundland on June 16th, the Polar Prince dropped its anchor about 900 miles off Cape Cod. The plan was to let the Titan loose at 3 a.m. ET on the morning of June 18th. The Coast Guard mentioned, though, that the actual dip into the water didn't start until roughly 7 a.m. ET. Just for context, the Titanic's remains are chilling at a depth of some 13,000 feet. That's a big deal because it's way deeper than the usual 2,000 or 3,000 feet that your average U.S. Navy submarine usually ventures. At such Titanic-like depths, the water pressure skyrockets to almost 400 times what it is on the ocean's surface. Picture this, about 6,000 pounds of pressure were squashing every square inch of the Titan's exterior. The plan was for the sub to shoot out a ping every 15 minutes while it was on its way down to the Titanic shipwreck, a cool 13,000 feet under the ocean's surface. The whole journey was meant to be a brief two and a half hours. However, about an hour and 45 minutes in, the Polar Prince lost touch with the Titan, sparking an urgent hunt for the lost submarine. All signs point to some sort of major malfunction or catastrophic failure. This could be because of anything from a leak to a power outage. There's even the possibility that a small electrical short circuit sparked a fire, which could have messed with the vehicle's electronic systems. These systems are pretty important. They're used for steering and controlling the vessel. The absolute worst case scenario would be if the pressure hull got breached, causing a catastrophic implosion. The initial rescue operation was a real international effort. It included two American C-130 planes and a pair of Canadian P-3 planes that had the ability to drop sonar probes into the water, plus a British C-17 to ferry equipment around. On the water surface, the Polar Prince and the Deep Energy, a pipe-laying ship from the Bahamas with two remotely operated vehicles or ROVs able to dive nearly 10,000 feet, helped with the search. The Atalante, a French research vessel, showed up on Wednesday and launched its underwater exploration robot, the Victor 6000. A Canadian vessel, the Horizon Arctic, also turned up and released an ROV, which made it to the ocean floor by Thursday morning. A third ROV, owned by the seabed mapping company Magellan, also managed to reach the ocean floor. These ROVs ended up being the key to discovering the remains of the Titan submersible. Coast Guard Rear Admiral John Mauger mentioned that one of the ROVs found debris about 1,600 feet from the Titanic's bow on Thursday morning. Once they confirmed that the debris was the nose cone of the Titan, the Coast Guard reached out to the families of the lost crew members. All in all, the ROV found five pieces of debris across two debris fields on Thursday. According to Paul Hankins, Director of Salvage Operations and Ocean Engineering for the U.S. Navy, this was all that was left of the vessel. When asked about the possibility of recovering the crew's remains, Rear Admiral Mauger remarked, This is an incredibly unforgiving environment down there. Why it's so tough to explore the deepest part of the ocean? You might know that 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by ocean, but what's beneath the surface is a much bigger enigma. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, we've only mapped less than 10% of the world's ocean depths using sonar. The ocean floor isn't flat and smooth. It's full of geological features, just like the land we walk on. There are canyons, plateaus, mountains, and even undersea volcanoes. But here's the kicker. The tech we use to map the surface doesn't do a good job underwater. Water is like a shield. It's great at blocking out light, radiation, and electromagnetism, basically everything we usually use to study stuff. Terrain mapping typically uses satellite imagery and GPS, but those don't work very well beyond pretty shallow depths. 
So if you're more than 50 meters down, you're pretty much flying blind unless you're actually there. To explore the deepest parts of the ocean, scientists have to use sound waves, which can travel through water pretty accurately using sonar. We use echo sounding to map the ocean floor, a method known as bathymetry. We're also starting to use geodesy, a satellite technology that maps by measuring tiny changes in gravity to reveal the bottom of the ocean. But there's a catch. Using sound waves is challenging because they have to be physically deployed. It's pricey to build vessels that can survive the intense pressures of the deep ocean, and even pricier to send people down in them. The deeper you go, the higher and more lethal the pressure becomes. In 2016, scientists estimated it would cost more than $3 billion to map the ocean floor. Companies like OceanGate claim to provide submersibles for scientific projects to help with this kind of research. OceanGate officially shut down its underwater exploration operation two weeks after the explosion incident of the Titanic Tour submarine. This was conveyed by OceanGate via their website, OceanGateExpeditions.com. The American company announced that they have suspended all exploration and commercial operations. This move is taken as OceanGate faces various investigations and potential lawsuits over the tragedy. Previously, OceanGate had re-advertised their exploration plans in the OceanGate Expeditions program for 2024. OceanGate scheduled two expeditions, namely June 12th to June 20th, 2024, and June 21st to June 29th, 2024. The cost of each trip is set at $250,000 per person, with the company's suspension the expedition to explore the Titanic wreck may possibly be canceled. The U.S. Coast Guard is investigating the deadly incident in collaboration with the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board. Both parties will gather information, determine possible causes, and issue safety recommendations. U.S. Coast Guard's Marine Investigation Board Chair Captain Jason Neubauer revealed that OceanGate could also face civil or criminal penalties from this incident. The Marine Investigation Board will conduct further analysis and testing on this incident with the available evidence. Even though the examination has been ongoing, former National Transportation Safety Board investigator Tom Howiter stated that this investigation could take months this is the first death on a passenger carriage submarine that I can think of, and certainly the first to go to the Titanic at this depth, said Howiter. According to him, the Titan submarine expedition is quite new and conducted in uncharted territories. Therefore, the analysis of its failure will take a long time. On the other hand, the Canadian police also announced that they would examine the Titan submarine case. A full investigation will be conducted if there is potential for criminal, federal, or provincial law violations. Canada is involved in this investigation because the polar print ship that carried the Titan submarine to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean is a Canadian flagged ship. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new videos. See you next time.